a meal with a magician. I've had some very strange meals in my time. If I liked, I could tell you about a meal in a mine or a meal with a millionaire. But I think you'd like to hear about a meal I once had with a magician. When I first met Mr. Leakey, I never guessed he was a magician. I was crossing a crowded street one afternoon when a little man ran past me straight in front of a car. If I hadn't grabbed the collar of his overcoat, the car would have knocked him down. He was quite sure I'd saved his life and said I must have dinner with him the next week. I didn't notice anything very odd about him then, except that his ears were rather large and he had a little tuft of hair on top of each one. Well, the next Wednesday, I went round to dinner. I won't tell you where it was, because if I did, you might go and bother him, and he would get very grumpy. He might make one of your ears as big as a cabbage leaf, or change over your right and left feet. I knocked at a very ordinary door, but when I got inside, it was one of the oddest rooms I've ever seen. There were two tables, one was made of copper with a huge crystal globe on it. The other was a solid lump of wood with holes cut for your knees. And the light came from two plants growing in a pot. They weren't electric lamps. I felt one, and it was cold and soft. Instead of wallpaper, there were curtains all round the walls, embroidered with pictures of people and animals. I know they were embroidered because I touched them. But it must have been a very funny sort of embroidery, because as long as you looked at the pictures, they stayed still. But when you looked away and back again, they changed. <laughs> Look here, said Mr. Leakey. You aren't easily frightened, are you? Uh, not very easily, I said. All right, then. I'll call my servant. But I must warn you, he's rather odd. At that... Mr. Leakey flapped the tops of his ears against his head. It made a noise like clapping, but not so loud. Out of a big copper pot in the corner came what I thought at first was a large, wet snake. Then I saw it had suckers all down one side. It was the arm of an octopus. Slowly, the whole creature came out and crawled up the wall. Then it slithered along the ceiling, holding on by its suckers. When it was above the table, it held on by one arm, and with the other seven, it got plates and knives and forks out of the cupboards and laid the table. That's Oliver, said Mr. Leakey. He's much better than a butler. He has more arms to work with. Now, what would you like for dinner? You can have whatever you like, pumpkin pie or spinach soup. Hmm? Oh, thank you. I'll have soup. I wasn't surprised to see that Mr. Leakey was wearing a top hat. I did think it queer, though, when he took it off and poured two platefuls of soup out of it. Yeah, we want some cream, don't we? Come here, Phyllis. A small green cow, about the size of a rabbit, ran out of a hutch, jumped onto the table and stood in front of Mr. Leakey, who milked her into a silver cream jug, which Oliver handed down for the purpose. The cream was excellent, and I enjoyed the soup very much. Now, what would you like next? said Mr. Leakey. Oh, I leave it to you. All right, we'll have grilled fish, said Mr. Leakey, and turkey to follow. Catch us a fish, please, Oliver, and be ready to grill it, Pompey. I heard a noise in the fireplace, and Pompey came out. He was a small, cheerful-looking dragon. He'd been lying on the burning coal and was red hot. So I was glad to see that as soon as he got out of the fireplace, he reached for a pair of fireproof boots. Now, Pompey, said Mr. Leakey, hold your tail up. If you burn the carpet again, I'll pour cold water over you. <laughs> then he added in a low voice, which only I could hear. Though, of course, I wouldn't really do that. It's very cruel to pour cold water on a dragon. So Pompey waddled along on his hind legs, holding up his tail. 
I was so busy watching the little dragon that I never saw how Oliver caught the fish. But when I looked at him again, he'd finished cleaning it and threw it down to Pompey. Pompey caught it in his front paws, which were just about the right temperature for grilling things. Oliver handed him a plate and he served the fish sizzling hot. Mr Leakey said, A dragon can be very useful. Better than a dog for dealing with burglars, don't you think? Hmm? Well, do you know, Mr Leakey, I'm ashamed to say that Pomp is the first dragon I've ever seen. <laughs> of course, of course, and how stupid of me. But perhaps you've already guessed that I'm a magician. <coughs> By now, Pompey was feeling the cold and his teeth were chattering, and he gladly scampered back to the fire. Then Oliver let down a large roast turkey on a china plate. Mr Leakey took a pipe out of his pocket and blew into it. Six large sausages came out of the other end. Oliver handed down the vegetables, but I don't know where they came from. The gravy came out of Mr Leakey's hat. I'll prepare some fruit while we're eating, he said. He stood up and tapped the corners of the table with his wand. At each corner, the wood swelled, then cracked, and little green shoots came out and started growing. While we ate the turkey, the green shoots grew into small trees with ripe, juicy fruit. One tree had beautiful golden fruit, which Mr Leakey called mangoes. The only proper place to eat a mango, he said, is in the bath. They're so messy. You see, they have a tough skin and a squashy inside, so once you get through the skin, all the juice squirts out. But I'll charm this one so that it won't splash you. He made a short spell, and then I ate the mango. It was wonderful. Later on, he gave me five mangoes to take home, but I had to eat them in the bath because they were not charmed. While we were having coffee, out of the hat of course, we talked for a while about magic and football and dogs. Then I said I must be getting home. With two of his arms, Oliver fetched my coat and helped me on with it. I'll take you home now, said Mr Leakey. But when you have a day to spare, we might go over to India or China or somewhere for the afternoon. Let me know when you're free. Now, stand on this carpet and shut your eyes or uh, you might get giddy. People often do the first time they travel by magic carpet. We got onto the hearth rug and I shut my eyes. My friend told the carpet my address and flapped his ears. I felt a cold rush of air on my cheeks and a slight giddiness. Then the air was warm again and Mr Leakey told me to open my eyes. I was in my sitting room, in my own home, on the other side of town. As the room was so small, the carpet couldn't settle down properly and stayed about a foot up in the air. I stepped down off it and thanked the old magician. <laughs> Good night, said Mr Leakey as he bent down to shake my hand. Then he flapped his ears again and the carpet vanished. I was left in the room with nothing but a nice, warm feeling and a parcel of five mangoes to prove to myself that it hadn't all been a dream.